Hi everybody, it's John back again with another Model Inbox review. Obviously we're looking at a North American F86 Sabre here, um, but the kit I'm actually doing is a 48 scale monogram F86 Sabre Jet, which is actually modelled on the F86F, um, the famous Korean War MiG killer, which often was found uh, killed by MiGs, but never mind. Um, yeah. This is an F-86A. This is uh, typically ID'd by the fact that in theatre in the Korean War, the F-86A tended to just have polished aluminium airframes as opposed to the yellow and black banded F-86Fs that served in the Korean War in Mig Alley during the early 1950s. The, um, the F-86A was a little bit underpowered to tackle the Mig-15 when it first entered combat with it, and it was replaced in about 1950, late 1950 one by the uh, the F86F as seen here with the yellow and black bands, um, and that's an ID trait. You can you can you can back, put that take that to the bank no problem whatsoever. That's the F86F there. There are a couple of other variants that I need to talk about because the options and costs cover um, a number of different variants. The Sabre was also built in an all rocket armed, non cannon armed variant called the F86D. This was often called the Sabre Dog because the aircraft had a, a dog sort of shaped nose system on the front of the aircraft, which housed the, uh, the air interception radar and fire control system um, for the aircraft's all rocket armament. And there were, this aircraft was built in two different variants, the F-86D and the F-86K. And the main differences between the F-86D and K is the K was built mainly by Fiat in Italy for the NATO pack countries that utilised the Sabre in Europe and it had European avionics but the aircraft was principally the same. The aircraft also came in the Canadair CL-13 guys and the early Canadair Royal Canadian Air Force Sabres were generally J-47 powered aircraft but the latter built variants for the Canadian Air Force and also for the um, German Air Force. I think they were Canadair, Canadian-built aircraft as well. They were powered by Rolls-Royce Avons, and they had a slightly stretched fuselage, which was quite interesting, because Monogram also produced a Canadair and a German variant, and they should have had stretched fuselages, but they didn't. So the Canadian Air Force variant must have been a J-47-powered aircraft that they modelled it on. Um, but the German, I'm sure the German aircraft are all powered by Avons. Also, the RAF flew the Sabre in the Sabre Mark IV guys, and these served the Royal Air Force in about 1951 to 53, maybe 54. Um, they weren't really truly replaced until the appearance of the Hawker Hunter, um, but the Sabre served the RAF relatively well. Right, inbox review. We we'll start with the uh, the boxing history. The kit was originally released in 1976. Uh, by Monogram as the F-86 Sabre Jet and this is actually the boxing that I've got the initial release kit and it's molded in silver grey plastic um, which is why they're marketing it as molded in authentic colours the plastic is pretty much silver um, lots of lots of uh, interesting information on the side of the box which unfortunately on my example you can't see because it's covered in brown tape but we'll get to that in a minute. 1976 went through to 1977 and Monogram teamed up with Bandai to uh, release this kit in the Far East. The differences between the box, the artwork's exactly the same, but you had a uh, North American F-86F Sabre written blue, um, blue writing at the top here and that's how you can tell a Bandai release with the Japanese information underneath it there. So that's 1977 from Bandai Monogram. Then in 1979, um, Monogram released two releases of this particular kit in the Canadair Sabre and this is German markings. I'm not sure if you've got a different set of transfers inside the kit for a different um, decal option but the German Luftwaffe one is definitely fielded on the front of the, of the box there. You can see it quite nice and it's also moulded in grey plastic which was a change also. That was 1979 and also in the same year they released a special release of the Canadair Sabre built specifically for the Young Modellers Builders Club. Um, and I, I don't really know much about the Young Modellers Builders Club, but it was an edition released specifically in 1979 by Monogram. Then in 1983, they changed box artwork and brought the Sabre F-86 Sabre Jet into MIG Alley. 
and you can see the F, the MiG 15s there in Chinese markings. Um, and it, it's quite a nice piece of artwork here. I quite like the look of this. Um, yeah. Very nice. I like the look of that. That's 1983. And then in 1987, Monogram released the Air Combat series offering, which, um, interestingly enough, has the MiG-15 that I've also that is underway getting built at the moment as well from Monogram and the F-86 in the same box. Interestingly, if you can get a hold of this particular boxing of the two get kits together, it's often cheaper to buy them like this even on the second-hand market than what it is to buy them as individual models. But that's the 1987 release um, of the 48-scale Monogram Air Combat series comprising the MiG-15 and the F-86 Sabre. Then in 1991, Monogram re-released the Canadair CL-13 Sabre, and I've got a feeling that this kit also incorporates RAF markings for the Mark IV. Um, so you've got the Mark V Sabre, which is a Luftwaffe variant, and the Mark IV Sabre. And that's, I like the box artwork on that as well. It shows the Sabre to good light. I quite like that. Uh, 1991 release there. And then finally, in, in 2012, yeah, this is quite a recent release, only eight years ago, Revell got their hands on the monogram moulds and released it as a Revell kit. It's exactly the same as the monogram kit that was released in the mid-70s. Um, so don't be, don't be surprised when you find the monogram kit inside this box. Um... Interestingly enough, we'll just leave you with a nice image there, the F-86F in Korean War colours. This is probably the version of the aircraft that I'll be doing without any doubt whatsoever. Um, but I also wanted to, to let you know that there's a project ongoing at the moment with the Monogram F-86 uh, F and the MiG-15 combined. Because I'm building these two kits for a friend of mine at work who's actually had his grandson's bedroom done up in combat colours, like green and brown camo pattern. <clears throat> and he wants two aircraft. He, he he didn't specify what aircraft he wanted, but he wanted two aircraft to hang from the ceiling. Um, and I thought these two aircraft, as an adversary set, would have been quite a good option for his uh, for his project. So that's quite nice. We we'll just pan the camera down very quickly to the box in question, which is here. The box is quite a large box. It's festooned in black tape, uh, brown tape, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and the box is quite a large box. It's about three hand widths across. Um, the box is battered, but the parts inside have checked them. They're all complete. Um, so that's quite nice. Actually, what I'll do, we'll take that out because <laughs> it's easier to do this like this. Just turn it upside down and take the box base out, leaving the parts inside the box. And then we'll put that on top of there and we'll feed the box's base with all the parts in turn. Right, instruction leaflet. The instruction leaflet on this is very similar to the MiG-15 instruction leaflet like I showed in a previous inbox of you very recently. It's about A4 size in length, but it's only about 6 to 7 inches across. So it's not quite A4 size, but it's pretty close. And on the front you've got 148 scale, kit serial number 5402 monogram label here, an F-86 Sabre jet written across the side here, and you've got some information on the aircraft there and some safety instructions. And also in the bottom you've got monogram models incorporated's Morton Grove, Illinois address, which is quite nice. The instructions are quite basic. Um, the kit is fairly detailed, but a lot of it is embossed parts with detail, which makes um, for painting a little bit trickier than what they would have been if you'd have had the parts separate on sprues but i'll just go through the construction flows it's quite simple really and easy to follow the instructions are very easy to follow in section one you're building the seat and ejection unit and in section two you've got the instrument panel there which marries up into the cockpit bathtub um and then sorry that's section one that's section one and then section two you're marrying all these parts into the fuselage halves with the jet pipe at the back there Got something to say about the jet pipe in a minute. Yeah, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Section three, you're putting the wings together. The flaps are actually movable on this kit, which is quite nice. And in section four, you're putting the main undercarriage oleos together. Quite easy to follow. Section five, you marry in the wings to the airframe. Section six, nose wheel assembly with the door there. An interesting thing about the nose wheel assembly. You've got to score that door part panel there, part um, 19, to bend it into that shape. 
And in section 7, you're putting all of those together with the air intake into the nose section of the fuselage. Then in section 8, you're basically putting the drop tanks together. Section 9 is the cockpit canopy assembly with a movable canopy hood there. It's quite nice, just like the MiG-15. Section 10, you've got the gun bays, just like the MiG-15. Section 11, you've got the air brakes, just like the MiG-15. It's all the same as the MiG-15, very similar in detail and concept, and the tailplane. There's another difference that I forgot to mention about the F-86A and the F-86F. The F-86F had an all-moving tailplane, and the F-86D had elevators, um, which made for operating the aircraft at high speeds an awful lot easier in the F variant. And that's one of the reasons why the aircraft was easier to operate in combat against the MiG-15. On the back of the sheet here, you've got a paint, com a paint and decal ID plan, which is quite easy to follow. And um, yeah, it's quite nice. Exploded views, quite nice. I quite like the look of this. It's good. And the markings look quite nice as well on this kit, which again, I'm quite impressed with. Got some shark's teeth and sinew at the front of there. Yeah, quite nice. I like the look of that. Quite good. And then you've got some, um, just some helpful hints and tips there for painting decals, the figure, pilot figure, um, the canopy detail and everything else. And there's some acknowledgements there from the museum in America, which is quite nice where this aircraft I think was, was taken from because they've got one, I think, in the Smithsonian Museum, um, which is quite nice. The decals, the decals on this kit, quite nice. They're... They're not typical decals from the era. Monogram uh, decals are actually very good. And I'm feeling these decals. The, the backing film is crystal clear. They're not very raised. The register is excellent on them, as you can see from those stars and bars. The, um, the numerals, even the stencils, they're nicely reproduced. don't think you can quite read them. They're not sort of on a, on a par with cartograph, but these were released in 1976, remember. And these are really nice decals. They, they're far superior to what you get with most companies in the 70s. So I'm quite impressed with those. Quite quite happy with those. I think they'll they'll go on no problem whatsoever. We'll just put those back into the instruction leaflet. And we'll just put that back into there. And then we'll start piecing the parts um, into the into the, the, ba the base of the box. Transparencies. The transparencies on this kit are actually quite nice. That's the forward canopy. That's quite nice. Quite impressed with that. It's nicely framed, crystal clear. It's a nicely moulded part. Quite like that. Good. And that's the main hood of the canopy. An interesting feature of the main hood is it's actually got the explosive lines on the top of the hood where the canopy would have been blasted off when the ejection seat flew through it. And I've got a technique for enhancing those with a form of wash that works very well indeed. So I'll be in interested to see how that works out. Um, we'll go through the sprues and parts. You've got the two drop tanks parts here, the halves. There's another two loose in the box somewhere. They're quite nicely molded. I quite like the look of that. You've got um, this sprue here, which features the fuselage half. That's quite nicely molded as well, the embossed detail to the air brake housing and the gun housing, which is quite nice. All the main oleo legs there, they're nicely moulded. The parts are nicely moulded. It's a shame you haven't got a through air intake, but you can't have everything. The doors, they're quite nicely moulded. There's the, the top of the ejection seat. The fuselage panel lines, yeah, they're raised, but they're quite fine. I don't think they're going to raise an issue. Um, and, you know, I think they're going to, they're going to, it being enhanced by paint quite nicely. There's the canopy hood slide unit, which is quite nice. Joystick and some other bits and pieces there. The main undercarriage wheel and the guns that go in the gun bay. They're the .50 caliber Browning machine guns. Quite nice. So the parts, the parts are actually quite nice. Oh, I do want to mention something about the jet pipe. Because like the MiG-15, this jet pipe... Whoops, where are you? The jet pipe, you can see it there. Can you see in the base of the jet pipe, you've got a little bit of turbine detail. And that is actually incorrect because the back of the J47 jet engine was just a plane through pipe that extended most of the rear section of the fuselage half. Because the engine was actually, the engine was actually placed about here. 
and then here you had a through pipe which went through to the jet pipe orifice at the back um, again you've this is the fuselage half there's no difference except the fact that the gun base covered so you don't have to go too pedantic through that um, the two embossed bars there's a bathtub here for the cockpit with some dials there they're quite nicely rendered quite like the look of that and that's the wheel well for the nose wheel again that's quite nicely rendered too quite nicely detailed um, the flaps there's two movable flaps on this kit they're just slab pieces of plastic really nothing to worry about um, that's the other flap and the other drop tank you don't need to look at that that's a wheel you've seen one of those this is the instrument panel there's a few dials on there probably paint up okay that's not too bad either um, this is the upper wing quite nicely panel lined yeah they're raised panel lines but they're not overdone i think they'll paint up quite nice quite like the look of that the main wing got something to say about the main wing because if you look very closely at the back where that hole is on the outside of the wing this will be visible when the wing is in place you've got a copyright code there marked copyright mmi that's monogram models incorporated that's really bad monogram smack your hand and on the inside edge you've got monogram copyright which it's upside down sorry monogram copyright made in the usa all rights reserved and then you've got that same copyright over the top of that hole as well it should only have been on the one side and i'm quite i'm gonna to have to clean that up and get rid of that which is a shame two tail planes there's not much really to write home about those they're just slab pieces of plastic the detail is quite not much to write home about and that's the other wing you've got the pitot tube on the on the wing edge there that's quite nicely molded and that's the gun bay door might have the gun bay door optionally opened or closed you've seen the wheel pilot figure this is the pilot figure that stands up next to the, the aircraft when he's built it's detailed on the front and the back which is nice massive parachute there i quite like the, the fact that these pilot figures are are standing up instead of just sitting down that's the nose wheel undercarriage wheel leg quite nice that's nicely molded and then you've got the nose wheel door with the embossed detail it's quite good and this is the pilot seat and the interesting thing about the pilot seat is yes there's straps in there can you see them trying to get them visible yeah you can see them there's straps in the pilot seat which is quite good so that's basically the parts the parts are quite nice i quite like the parts that they're on a par with the with the mig 15 which is quite good so what i'll do now is i'll quickly close this video down by reading through the gump the kit we're doing an inbox review on is the monogram north american f86 saber jet its serial number is 5402 and its release date was 1976 and it's molded in 148 scale. There are decals for one version of 51st Fighter Interception Wing, United States Air Force, based in Korea in 1953. There are 48 parts on three silver grey plastic sprues and three parts on one clear plastic sprue, totaling 51 parts in total. The kit's dimensions will be about nine and a quarter inches long by nine and a quarter inches span and it should sit about three and three quarter inches high on its undercarriage. Now the options and costs, because the Sabre is quite a popular modelling subject for companies to cover, I've only covered 148 scale and 132nd. There are a number in 48, but they are quite an interesting offering, and I'll try and explain which ones are worth buying and which ones, in my opinion, aren't. Academy did an F86F Sabre, which retails about 20 to 50 pounds. It can be bought quite cheaply for about 20 quid if you hold out in the price um, and this kit is a sort of okay average sort of quality model but Canadair Sabre 2020 release from Airfix which is coming out hopefully sometime this year is supposed to be a really top-notch model and that is going to be released for around about 33 quid in the shops when it turns up now there are two offerings from Aurora and one from Bronco the Aurora kit is of an F86D Sabre. I've got no pricings available for that. But I have seen uh, one or two on eBay uh, several years ago. And they didn't go for a lot of money. And to be honest with you, I don't think they're worth um, 
huge amounts of money anyway. Um, but I do remember them going for somewhere between 80 and 100 quid, but it's not a very good kit. So um, I, I don't, in my opinion, it's a collector's option. The Bronco model is a newish release. Um, I've got no price and details on that either, but I've got a feeling it's going to be around about the 30 quid mark. Collect Air models, they produce um, an F86 D, F, K and L Sabre. No pricing is available on that, but a lot of their other kits are multimedia and they go for quite a lot of money in the region of 100 to 130 quid. Ishii, I've been told how to pronounce this kit, it's not Ishii, it's Ishii. They do an F86E Sabre and Canadair CL13 for about 20 to £25. Not a bad offering for the release dates, quite a good kit. Entex also do an F86D Sabre for about 12 to £20. And Hasegawa produce an F86S Sabre and a Canadair CL13. And these kits retail for anything from £20 to £80, depending on how much money the seller wants for it. But uh, they're not a bad kit either. There's a company called High Plains Models and they produce a Canadair Sabre and an Avon powered Sabre for about 25 quid. Monogram's original release of the F86S Sabre and the Canadair CL13, they retail for between 10 and 15 quid and they're not a bad option even though they're quite an old tool. Monogram's combat aircraft series comprising the MiG-15 and the Sabre jet usually retails between 20 to 25 quid, so it's often a cheaper option if you want both kits. Olin, they produced an F86A, a D and an F variant of the Sabre. No pricing is available on that and it's very rare. Not such a good kit either. Premier also produced an F86 Sabre, which is an old tool as well. No pricing is available on that. Pro Modeler built an F86D Sabre for about 10 to 15 quid. It's not bad. The special hobby model of the F86K Sabre retails for about £30, and that is a nice model. Union Model also do an F86K Sabre, and it's not bad. Um, no pricing is available, and I'm guessing it's quite pricey because it's a collector's kit now. A new PC built an F86D Sabre for about £27 to £30, and that's sort of on a par with the Ishii kit. Now, Academy also built an F86D Sabre, which is a Pro Modeler kit reboxed for 15 to 50 quid, depending on how much money the, um, the seller wants. AFV Club reboxed the Academy kit of the F86F Sabre for about 18 to 25 quid. Um, Bandai Monogram's offering of the F86 Sabre, which is the Monogram kit. No pricing is available on that, but it's probably on a par with their Monogram release. Edward do an Ultimate Sabre kit, which is based on the Hasegawa kit. Quite a nice model, but it can be bought for as little as 27, but sometimes goes for anything between 50 and 85 quid. ERTL produced an F86E Sabre and a Canadair CL13 Sabre, which is an Ishii kit. No pricing is available on that, but it's probably similar to the Ishii model's pricings. Italeri produced the F86E and F Sabres, which are Ishii kits, reboxed, 10 to 30 quid. Lindbergh did an F86A, D and F Sabre, which is the Olin kit, not very good, not highly recommended, for about 8 to £36. Must Have Models also produced the F86K Sabre with different decals from the Pro Modelers reboxing for £30 to £35. Ravel also re-released -re the Pro Modeler kit of the F86D Sabre for £10 to £30. Ravel also released the F86F Sabre from Monogram, which is a 12 to 40 pound offering. And they also produce the Canadair CL13, which is based on the Hasegawa kit, and that kit retails for about 17 to 25 pound. Refell, uh, sorry, Vail Ishii also produced an F86E Sabre and Canadair CL13 model based on the Ishii kit for about 24 to 30 pound. In 132nd scale, Hasegawa do a really, really nice F86F Sabre for about 38, anything up to 80 quid, and it's a really nice kit. But in my opinion, the best two offerings are the next two. The one from Kinetic is an excellent model of the F86F Sabre, really high praise, about 24 to 30 pound, and the Kitty Hawk model is probably slightly better of the F86D and K variants. These are the rocket armed um, Sabre dogs. With the, no, with the nose cone housing the radar, and those retail for about 36 to 75 pound. Now, Hasegawa Hales have reboxed the Hasegawa kit of the F86F Sabre, 
no pricings on that, but it's probably on a par with the Hasegawa offering. Italieri produce, sorry, Italieri produce the F86S Sabre, which is the kinetic kit, reboxed for about forty to fifty pound. Monocraft, uh, Minicraft also produce the Hasegawa kit as the F86S Sabre, reboxed for about forty-five pound to fifty-five pound. And the company called Wolfpack Designs, um, who do a different decal option to the original Kitty uh, kinetic kit of the F86S Sabre. Um, and this kit can be bought for quite little money, really, for between 14 and £25, and that's quite highly recommended as well. Conclusions. Like the Monogram MiG-15, this kit was released in 1976 and is very similar in terms of detail and quality, and the concept seems to follow the same lines. What moves on the MiG-15 usually moves on the F86. It will be my second monogram aircraft kit and should build up fairly quickly. Again, this kit would be a recommendation kit as it is easy and relatively cheap to acquire. Now, I do hope that this video has been of some use. Um, if you have any queries, questions, any comments, just pop them in the comment slip and I'll try and get back to you with any answers required. I hope all your modeling projects are running smooth and that you're having fun. That's basically the important thing. Stay safe in these days of COVID-19. Um, but just basically have fun and thanks for tuning in and I'll see you for the next video. Bye bye for now.